The time has come to choose your weapon. Will it be the Moza SGP Sequential Shifter? Will it be the Moza HGP H Pattern Shifter? Or will it be both? You decide. Hey guys, welcome back to Virtual Motorheads. Today is another exciting video. We are doing part two of my Moza HGP versus Moza SGP shifter series. Now, if you haven't watched part one yet, the link will appear right above my head. So please click on that link if you don't want to miss out. But today, we're going to look at the amazing SGP shifter. In my hand, the Moza SGP Sequential Shifter. Now I've had this bad boy for the last four months. Same as my HGP Shifter. I've used it a lot. It hasn't skipped a beat. Now the general consensus on the internet is that this thing is very noisy. Yes it is. But is it annoying? I won't say so because I'm playing with headphones. My sound is loud and it's nice to hear every shift, especially feel it as well. But we are gonna look at ways, maybe how to make it less noisy if possible. So, next up, we're gonna zoom in and have a look at this long, thin, noisy shifter. So here I've got the Moza SGP shifter, which we are going to be looking at. But I've put it next to the HGP shifter so that you can just compare them with each other in size. Now they are actually very similar in size, except this one is longer because it is a sequential shifter. So let's put this one to the side and just focus on the sequential shifter. Okay, so what can I tell you about this? Well, it's made from aerospace grade aluminium alloy, just like all of Moses' products. It has these two mechanical buttons. These two mechanical buttons I use for ignition and start for all my cars. It also has this little button here now you can assign this to anything you want. I like to assign this to reverse. So I can quickly put the car into reverse. I don't have to go through. If you know what I mean. Let's see that in an instant replay. You can also change this knob. Look at that. It comes off very easily. Also made out of metal. It's not plastic. It feels great. It has these two adjustable screws. Can you call it screws? What does the cheat sheet say? Um, adjustable damper. Both sides. Now someone told me if I adjust these, it will take away the noise. Yes, it's noisy, like I've mentioned earlier but it really doesn't bother me i had one guy on my channel say doesn't that clicking noise do your head in after a while does my head in i don't know what that even means like what makes me crazy no the shifter also has a usb connected that you can connect it directly to a usb hub or your pc and then also the transit port where you can connect it with an RJ11 cable to uh, the base if it supports it. It uses a stable non-contact hall sensor. Now this non-contact hall sensor technology 
Apparently, it ensures the high stability without wear, guaranteeing a consistent and reliable shifting time after time. The proof is in the pudding. I've had this for four months. This thing shifts like a beast. I don't miss a shift, never. And it's quick. Let's not forget, at the bottom, you've got eight M6 threaded holes to attach to a base plate or whatever. Um, and then it allows for M8 screws to attach to your aluminum rig. I've also attached this to mine and it doesn't move. What don't I like about the shifter? I'm gonna be honest. The clicking sound, yes, I would have liked it. Maybe if they could have put like dampness here, it would have been better, but there is adjustable dampness here. So we're gonna play around with it just now after this, and then we're gonna see what it does. Then you're gonna see this. Look very carefully, there's a bit of, do you see this play? There's a bit of play to the left, but that doesn't bother me. So yeah, I can't really, <laughs> I can't really fault this thing. Um, I really, really like it. One important bit of information that I also wanna share with you is the dimensions of the shifter. Very important for when you wanna mount this on your rig. Um, the width is 52 millimeters, the length, it's 182 millimeters and the height without adjusting the height is 320 but you can add an additional 64 millimeters to it which means the height can go all the way up to 384 millimeters um, now that's very important because you must try and get the shifter as close to your steering wheel as possible next up we're going to play around with how you can adjust it to suit your personal preference See, okay, that. <laughs> I'm doing this for the first time. Okay, so now I've loosened the dampness on both sides. Let's check. That's very noisy. Yeah. Or is it less noisy? Let me know down in the comments. Okay, let's make it a little bit tighter. It's gonna get stuck. Oh my goodness. No, I can't even move it. Okay, that's too tight. Because I like to adjust it just to the point where it almost, almost gets stuck. Check, get stuck. There we go, that's what I wanted to show you. Get stuck, so be careful. Okay, next up. Let's quickly see how you adjust this handle. The height. I just need to get the right tools. My shift already has some wear and tear marks on it. I like it, makes it more authentic. I'm gonna show you how easy this is. And the thing is, the higher the handle is, the more leverage you'll have, and the less resistance you'll have. So the longer the handle, the more leverage, less resistance. And um, but yeah, that's how easy it is to take it off, as you can see. So if you put it in all the way, makes it quite short. That's what she said. But depending on your rig, if you can fit it up close like that, yes, I would recommend you do that. But I have to keep it at this height. Otherwise, on my rig, which you'll see later, not high enough as I'm putting this back together I'm gonna show you all the different options in the Moza Pitao software 
where you can customize the shifter and there's not a lot but I'm going to show you anyways okay so now we are in Moza Pithouse software again I mean come on how cool is the software Moza really went out of their way to make this easy to understand intuitive it's just extremely user friendly but anyways so as you can see on screen I've got my sequential shifter right here and if you don't have one then unfortunately for you this little icon on the left will not be enabled but this is going to be a very quick little tutorial of this part of the video um, so you can test your shifter here make sure that it works as you can see um, shifting up shifting down there's that little button that I like to use for reverse and then down here the two mechanical buttons that I use for ignition and start just want to show you what you can do here you can change the colors you'll be able to see this in the video as well so your yeah, orange yellow green light blue roll blue purple and white you can do the same for the other button as well I'm just gonna leave them red and blue for now uh, you can adjust the button brightness you can change the shifting direction um, this is actually uh, as Joey and friends would say the point is moo this is all a moo point huh a moo point <laughs> Yeah, it's like a cow's opinion. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't matter. <laughs> it's moo. This button here is moo because you can set your direction or if you want this to be shifting down and this shifting up, <laughs> you can set that in your software. So I don't understand this button. And then pick button. What is that? Big button synchronization. Let's see what Moza says here. After connecting to the wheelbase, it can be used. When the switch is turned on, it synchronizes with the paddle button number on the steering wheel. That's cool. I didn't know that. That's the first time that I'm seeing this. Because this can sometimes be a pain in the ass, especially if the game doesn't have the ability for you to map different buttons for the same action. Um, I think ACC is like that, but I don't know of any cars in ACC that you can race with a sequential shifter like this. Most of those cars are paddle shifters, if I'm not mistaken. You can correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong. But how cool is that? If you have a base where you can plug the sequential shifter into, just make sure you enable that. Okay. And that is it beautiful shifter on the left colors you can change here at the top button brightness you can set shift direction you can change that is it something else that I wanted to show you quickly is you'll be able to see in this video that I'm taking with the cell phone how I've mounted my sequential shifter and my HTP shifter you want to make sure that they are nice and close to each other otherwise it's going to feel uncomfortable and unnatural uh, I'm going to be honest with you, I would like to get my HGP shifter even closer, but guess what happens? As soon as you put it in 7th gear, it hits the SGP shifter. So I think this is as close as I'm going to get it without causing any other collisions between the two controllers. Up next, we're going to race in Automobilista 2 with the SGP sequential shifter, and then you'll be able to see how it performs. Let's race. Okay, so I'm in Automobilista 2 and we're going to see what this uh, SGP shifter can do. I'm racing in a McLaren F1 GTR against 29 other opponents. Uh, I've set the AI difficulty to 95% um, and we're racing on Spa, one of the most awesome racing tracks in the world. So. 
let's see if I can get to the front from the middle of the pack. Um, I don't have high hopes because the AI is quite sometimes stupid, especially on this track. They just race you off the track. Um, so yeah, uh, Razor Studios, please man, update 1.6, please fix the AI because yes, that's the only thing that this game really, I think, struggles at. Gloves on, let's race. See if I can make up some spaces here. Oh! Car left. Clear left. This is tricky, man. This is normally where they push me off, the AI. Car left. Clear left. I didn't do a bad job there. Okay, if you say so, thank you. <laughs> Left side. Yes. Still there. Yes. Hold your line. I'm trying to. He's still there. Mm-hmm. And there he goes. Yeah. Not too wide. Damn it. Do it. Car left. Foot sack. Hold your line. I'm trying. Still there. He's still there. Like a bat out of hell. Sure. A little bit of drifting there. Not my strong point. I always like to take the inside, but let's see. Seems like that is the corner to pass the AI. Come on, cap on your left. Clear left. It's gonna be wide. Yes. Track limits. Car left, clear left. Temps falling. It's now 28 Celsius. Yes. Thank you for the weather forecast. What am I doing? But how cool is the shifter? Doesn't skip a beat. 
How long it's going to last, I don't know. That you can never say. But from the way it feels and the way it looks, I'm expecting a very long time. The leader has just done a 215.18. See if I can get past these Nissans. Nissan. Okay, Calvin, halfway home, fuel the left side. Clear left, P10, left side. Clear left. Well done, fellow. <laughs> yeah, you gotta love crew chief. This guy. On your right. Yes, I know. He's still there. Clear right. Car right. Clear right. What was that? Clear I right. think I just put my foot on the clutch. Yes, see, this thing's got no grip, man. See if I can just make it. I'm in the top 10. But how about I try to get past this Nissan? Come on. I'm saying it again. I love my shifter. But I want to try out. This is a magic one. The all-in-one sequential Going and H pattern. On your left. Clear left. I really want to try that shifter. See if it's better. And it's worth the extra price because it's double the price. And we are done. Anyway, well done. And P9 from 16th place. All the way. To ninth place. Car left. But yeah, like I said, I want to try out the Sim Magic wheel. Ugh, Sim Magic Car shifter. Right. I think it's the DS right 8X or DSX8. I'm not sure about that name. So Sim Magic, if you are watching this, please send me your shifter. I'll send it back to you. I promise. Stay on the track, Ruan. And uh, I just want to see, because it's in South Africa, it's over 10,000 Rand for that single shifter that can do both. But for these two shifters together, I paid less than six grand. So I'm very, very curious. But as you can see, the shifter is awesome. It does exactly what it needs left to. Side. Clear left. And. Um, not once did I miss shift or anything like that, or did it miss a shift. So yeah, highly recommend it. And yes, get both. If you're on a tight budget and you want to experience both H pattern and sequential shifting, then get the Moza HTP shifter get the Moza SGP shifter. Just make sure... Still clear right. Just make sure they both can fit on your rig. Car right. As you can see, they do on mine. Right side clear. Car right. Clear right. All right, guys. With that... Back to the studio. Left side. Clear left. And that brings us to the end of part two of my Moza HTP versus SGP shifter series. 
And I really hope in this video that I've managed to convince you how awesome this SGP shifter is. I mean, it's bang for your buck, made out of solid steel. This is gonna last you a very, very long time. But it all just depends on whether you are a kind of guy that likes to race cars with a sequential gearbox, or whether you're a guy that likes to race cars with an H pattern shifter, or whether you're a guy who likes to race both kind of cars, and whether it will fit on your rig. So, if you've got any questions, ask it in the comments, and please like and subscribe, because I'm really trying to make something of this channel. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.